The following stories are true. Listener discretion is advised. If you like these stories and want to hear more, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is the first story. I can still hear the echoes of his angry shouts reverberating in my mind as I sped away from the house, the tires screeching on the dark, rain-slicked pavement. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel the weight of his fury following me like a relentless shadow. Melanie, get out of this nightmare, I thought to myself as I gripped the steering wheel with trembling hands. The rain lashed against the windshield, making it even harder to see the winding road ahead. But I couldn't slow down. I had to put as much distance as possible between myself and him. The night was moonless, and the only light came from the occasional flickering street lamp. My headlights cut through the darkness, revealing fleeting glimpses of the desolate countryside around me. The silence inside the car was deafening, broken only by the roar of the engine and the patter of raindrops. My mind raced with a torrent of emotions, a swirling maelstrom of fear, anger, and despair. How had I let things get this far? The man I had once loved had become a monster, a cruel and violent tyrant who had trapped me in a cycle of abuse and fear. But tonight was different. Tonight, I had found the courage to escape. As I rounded a bend in the road, my heart leaped into my throat. There he was, in his black pickup truck, headlights glaring like the eyes of a malevolent beast. He was following me, his monstrous anger undiminished by the rain-soaked night. Panic surged through my veins, and I pushed the accelerator to the floor, praying that my old car had one last burst of speed left in it. The road stretched on endlessly, a ribbon of asphalt winding through the dark forest. I could hear his truck's engine roaring behind me, drawing closer with every passing second. He was gaining on me, and my options were dwindling. I couldn't outrun him forever, and I knew that if he caught me, it would be the end. Desperation gave way to determination as I scanned the road ahead for any sign of escape. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, I saw it, a narrow dirt road branching off to the right. It was a risky move, but I had no other choice. I yanked the steering wheel to the right, sending my car careening onto the rough track. The dirt road was a nightmare of potholes and mud, and my car bounced and jolted as I pushed it to the limit. I could hear his truck behind me, its tires struggling to find purchase on the treacherous terrain. For a moment, I dared to hope that I might escape his clutches, but then I saw it, a fallen tree blocking the road ahead. I slammed on the brakes, my car skidding to a halt just inches from the massive trunk. There was no way around it, and I knew that I was trapped. I sat there, my heart pounding, as his truck roared to a stop behind me. The headlights illuminated the rainy darkness, casting long, eerie shadows. He emerged from his truck, a hulking figure shrouded in darkness and rain. I could see the rage contorting his face, the madness in his eyes. He approached my car with slow, deliberate steps, and I felt a surge of terror so profound that it left me paralyzed. With a violent yank, he tore open the driver's side door, sending it crashing against the frame. Rainwater and cold air rushed in, and I could feel his icy fingers gripping my arm like a vice. He dragged me from the car, and I stumbled and fell to the muddy ground. The rain soaked through my clothes as he loomed over me, his breath hot and fetid. You thought you could get away from me? He spat, his voice a venomous hiss. You're mine, Melanie, and you'll always be mine. Tears mixed with rain on my cheeks as I stared up at him, my body trembling with fear and defiance. I knew that I couldn't let him break me, not again. With every ounce of strength I had left, I kicked him in the groin, and he staggered back with a howl of pain. That momentary reprieve was all I needed. I scrambled to my feet and raced back to my car, ignoring the mud and the rain, and slammed the door shut. My hands fumbled with the keys, but I managed to start the engine just in time. The tires spun in the mud, and then, with a triumphant roar, I was free. I didn't look back. I didn't want to see his furious face in the rearview mirror. I just drove, faster and farther than I had ever driven before, as the rain poured down in a relentless torrent. The road stretched out before me, winding through the desolate darkness. But this time, it was a road to freedom. As I put more miles between myself and the nightmare I had left behind, a sense of liberation washed over me. The rain had stopped, and the first faint light of dawn was beginning to break on the horizon. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew one thing for certain. 
I was never going back. Here is the second story. As the engine hummed beneath me, I navigated my way through the inky darkness of the desolate highway. The clock on the dashboard read 2.37 a.m., and my eyelids felt heavy, weighed down by the exhaustion of a long day. The radio emitted a soft, eerie static punctuating the silence. I cursed the fact that my car's radio had decided to give out on the loneliest stretch of road in the middle of nowhere. I had been driving for hours, trying to put as much distance between me and my problems as possible. The late night road was my refuge, a place where I could think and escape from the harsh realities of my life. But on this particular night, as the miles stretched on, a strange sense of unease crept over me. It was then that I saw her, a lone figure on the side of the road, her thumb outstretched into the night. The hitchhiker. I hesitated for a moment, my instincts warning me against stopping for a stranger in the dead of night. But empathy tugged at my conscience. She looked desperate, stranded, and vulnerable. Besides, what harm could one person do? I pulled over to the side of the road, the gravel crunching under my tires as I came to a stop. The woman approached my car cautiously, her face partially obscured by a tangled mess of dark hair. She wore a tattered jacket and had a worn backpack slung over one shoulder. Thank you so much for stopping, she said, her voice shaky with relief as she climbed into the passenger seat. I offered a weak smile, trying to appear friendly but cautious. No problem, where are you headed? Anywhere but here, she replied with a bitter laugh, avoiding eye contact. I glanced at her, curious about her story. I'm Ashley, by the way, I offered, trying to break the ice. Call me Jane, she said, still not meeting my gaze. As we continued down the highway, the tension in the car seemed to grow with each passing mile. Jane's silence was unsettling, and I couldn't help but wonder if I had made a terrible mistake by picking her up. I could feel her eyes on me, studying me, but whenever I turned to look at her, she quickly averted her gaze. Finally, she spoke, her voice low and conspiratorial. You know, you shouldn't have stopped for me. I furrowed my brow, growing increasingly uneasy. What do you mean? Jane leaned in closer, her eyes wide with an unsettling intensity. You have no idea what you've just gotten yourself into, Ashley. A chill ran down my spine. My heart pounded in my chest and I gripped the steering wheel tightly. What are you talking about? Her lips curled into a sinister smile, revealing a glint of malice in her eyes. I'm not who you think I am. Suddenly my car's headlights illuminated a road sign ahead and I saw the name of the town we were approaching. Blackwood. The name sent shivers down my spine. I had heard ominous rumors about the place, stories of people disappearing without a trace. A sense of dread washed over me, and I realized that I was in grave danger. I tried to remain calm, my mind racing for a way out of this nightmare. Listen, Jane, I don't know what game you're playing, but I'm not in the mood for it. Just tell me where you want to get out, and I'll drop you off. Jane's laughter was cold and hollow. Oh, Ashley, you really don't get it, do you? You can't just drop me off. It doesn't work like that. My heart sank as I watched the road signs pass by, indicating that we were drawing closer and closer to Blackwood. Panic set in, and I knew I had to act fast. I slammed my foot on the gas pedal, hoping to outrun whatever danger Jane represented. But she wasn't done with her twisted game. With a sudden, unnatural strength, she reached over and grabbed the steering wheel, sending the car veering off the road and into the darkness of the surrounding woods. The car crashed through trees and underbrush. The world outside reduced to a chaotic blur. The impact was deafening, and my vision blurred as the airbags deployed, enveloping me in a suffocating cloud of dust and smoke. I struggled to regain my bearings, my heart pounding in my chest. Through the haze, I saw Jane, remarkably unharmed, unbuckling her seatbelt and climbing out of the wreckage. Come on, Ashley! She taunted, her voice carrying through the chaos. We've got a long night ahead of us. My mind raced as I unbuckled my seatbelt and stumbled out of the wreckage, my head spinning from the crash. Jane stood there, waiting for me, her dark eyes filled with a malevolent glee. The woods around us seemed to close in, the night growing darker and more oppressive. As I followed Jane into the ominous depths of the Blackwood Forest, I knew I had made a terrible mistake. I had picked up a hitchhiker in the dead of night and now I was caught in a nightmare from which there might be no escape. The chilling realization set in. 
I was in the clutches of a stranger whose true intentions remained shrouded in darkness, and the road ahead was filled with unspeakable horrors. Here is the third story. It was a moonless night, and I found myself alone in my car, driving through an unfamiliar stretch of road. My GPS had betrayed me, displaying that dreaded message. No signal. I cursed under my breath as the thick woods surrounding me seemed to swallow up the narrow road. It was a moment when every cliché about horror movies flashed through my mind, but I had no choice but to push forward. The engine hummed softly, casting eerie shadows from the trees onto the winding path ahead. The only source of light was my car's dim headlights, and they struggled to pierce the oppressive darkness. The silence was broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. I tightened my grip on the steering wheel, trying to shake off the unease that was creeping over me. My heart pounded in my chest, and the sound of it seemed to fill the car's interior. I knew I had to find my way back to civilization soon, but every turn I took seemed to lead me deeper into this uncharted territory. That's when I saw him, a figure standing in the middle of the road ahead. Panic surged through me as I slammed on the brakes, sending my car skidding to a halt just a few feet from the mysterious stranger. My breath hitched and I reached for my phone to call for help. But of course, there was no signal. The man in front of my car was cloaked in darkness, his features obscured. My mind raced with fear-fueled thoughts. Was he a threat? A serial killer? A deranged lunatic lurking in the woods? I had no way of knowing. As I trembled behind the wheel, the man took a hesitant step toward my car, his hands raised in a gesture of surrender. I'm so sorry to startle you, he said, his voice soft and soothing. I didn't mean to frighten you. I was just trying to get your attention. I lowered my window just a crack, still wary but intrigued. Who are you? What do you want? My name is Michael, he replied, his tone calm. I saw your car from a distance and I thought you might be lost. Are you lost? I hesitated, my instincts warring with my desperation for help. Yes, I am. My GPS isn't working and I have no idea where I am. Michael nodded sympathetically. I can help you with that. I know these woods well. It's easy to get turned around out here. Where are you trying to go? I told him the name of the town I was heading to and he smiled reassuringly. You're not far from there. I can guide you back to the main road. Just follow me and you'll be on your way in no time. Reluctantly, I stepped out of my car, keeping a cautious distance from Michael. He seemed harmless enough, and the thought of someone guiding me out of this nightmarish situation was too enticing to pass up. As we began walking together, the darkness of the woods closed in around us, making me feel vulnerable and exposed. But Michael made idle conversation as we walked, telling me about the history of the area and pointing out landmarks that might help me remember the way. He seemed genuinely kind, and my initial fear began to fade. We reached a small clearing, and I saw the glow of a distant streetlight through the trees. Relief washed over me as I realized we were nearing civilization once more. Michael turned to me with a friendly smile. There you go, he said. You should be able to find your way from here. Just follow that road and it will take you to your destination. I thanked him profusely, grateful for his assistance. I don't know what I would have done without you, I admitted. He chuckled softly. No need to worry, I'm just glad I could help. Take care, Esther. I watched him disappear back into the darkness of the woods before I resumed my journey. The road widened and the familiar signs of civilization began to reappear. Soon I was back on the main road and the lights of the town twinkled in the distance. As I pulled into a gas station to fill up my tank and grab a coffee, the night's events seemed like a distant memory. I couldn't help but chuckle at my own overactive imagination. Michael had turned out to be a lifesaver, not a monster. With my caffeine fix in hand, I continued on my way and the rest of the drive passed without incident. I finally arrived at my destination, exhausted but relieved to be safe and sound. Over the next few days, I couldn't shake the feeling that something about the encounter with Michael was off. It was as though a nagging doubt had taken root in my mind. Maybe it was just the strangeness of the night that had me second guessing myself. Then one evening, I saw a news report that sent chills down my spine. A serial killer had been apprehended in the same area where I had encountered Michael. The man had been responsible for a string of murders. 
luring his victims into the woods before brutally ending their lives. My heart raced as I watched the news report, and a sickening realization washed over me. Michael had known those woods well, and he had guided me through them without hesitation. Had I narrowly escaped becoming another victim of the same killer? The thought haunted my dreams for weeks, and I couldn't help but wonder what had really transpired that night. Had I truly encountered a kind stranger, or had I narrowly escaped a sinister fate? The uncertainty gnawed at me, a chilling reminder that darkness could hide in the most unexpected places, even in the guise of a helpful stranger on a moonless night. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening. 